nightmares in my head I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space, no privacy And silently it could build and build until you finally see Whoa it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer. Well, welcome back to the Guitar Temple. Glad you're here as always. Don't forget, of course, like and subscribe. Click that little like on uh, bell button. And don't forget down there, over here, you can press a share button. Please share, please share the video. I would appreciate that very much. Well, Jim Dandy to the rescue. Jim Dandy, he introduced us to one of the greatest guitar players the world has ever known. Now, I believe in melodicness. So before the non-professional guitar player says, it's a bunch of gibberish, just think of the gymnastics some of these girls do in the Olympics. It's absolutely remarkable, right? This speed technique that this guitar player does is just, just shy of absolute gymnastics. Because it looks easy, but it's extremely hard to play that clean, clear, crisp, and accurate. There's no doubt about it, there's no getting around it. Jim Dandy was the lead singer of Black Oak, Arkansas. Black Oak, Arkansas introduced this guitar player at the age of 17, Sean Lane. Sean Lane is credited by Guthrie Govan, uh, almost every guitar player that you can think of, as being one of the world's best. He had psoriasis when uh, he was about 12 years old, and he also had arthritis. And uh, he, the cortisone caused a problem in his body, and the medicine that he took for his illness caused him to gain massive weight. Um, his daughter, Ashley, was born in the 80s, also, he does have a child. But I wanted to point out uh, that he died at age 40, and yet people around the world know the great Sean Lane, if you're a guitar player of any sort, any sorts. So let's take a look at Sean Lane and his guitar prowess. A sweet, gentle guy. Most people of the world like the guy. Uh, he died of a lung problem at the age of 40. He died of uh, some type of lung problem, unfortunately. So, I hope that you like today's video, and do uh, like and subscribe, and uh, it's okay to open and say hello. Tell me, where you from? Where you from, by the way? I want to know where you're from. Okay? All right? And hey, good to see you here again, here at the Guitar Temple. Right at the moment, I'm at the Hard Rock Cafe. Talk to you soon. Let's take a look at Sean Lane. Is Black Oak, Arkansas. So you've been hankering to pack your bags and take a musical road trip to the deep south, all the way to the heart of Dixie, you say? Experience the real meaning of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, a true southern fried hot and nasty story. Well, head on down that two-lane blacktop, about a mile half past Skinnerd, and another hundred yards or so to the other side of the Almonds, when you get to the turnoff marked Black Oak, Arkansas, just look for the scrub board, some guitars, a shirtless mountain man in white spandex. Kill the Indian, could brother, you're there. When you're talking 70s Southern rock, the buck pretty much stops with the good old boys from Black Oak, Arkansas. A rowdy sextet led by the blonde mane wild man Jim Dandy Mangrum. In 1969, they recorded two albums for the Memphis Fame Stacks label, 
as a nobody else before changing their name to Black Oak, Arkansas and hitting their deep fried buggy stride on Atlantic. With Dandy's back porch draw, cohort's penchant for, well, hell-bent redneck metal, the group quickly became faves on the lucrative arena rock circuit. And while regarded primarily as a live act, they did manage some chart success during their heyday, including three gold albums, their self-titled debut album, 1973's Ronch and Roll Live, and High on the Hog. And so by 1977, after living plenty high on the hog themselves, Black Oak, Arkansas dissolved and faded into obscurity. Black Oak, Arkansas was America's pioneering southern cosmic boogie band and the unsung inspirations to bands such as the Allman Brothers, Guns N' Roses, Van Halen's David Lee Roth, inspiring everyone from Skinner to Spinal Tap. Everybody makes the original mistake in an English school the first time they see those letters written across a map and it says Arkansas, but everybody says Arkansas. That's mistake number one. Mistake number two, everybody thinks out of the Ozarks, all you see is the Beverly Hillbillies. Totally disproved. No mistake from the United States of America, Atlantic recording artist, Black Oak Arkansas! that have been arisen around us and I guess because we're kind of a paradox we love you. I will always be very partial to the live audience I got it in my blood I can't help myself you know I've had a lot of people that want to go back to simple life and I treasure that I think it's great I have the simple life when I go back home the few times I get to go back home ladies and gentlemen at the ripe old age this veteran right here at the road of 17 years old Mr. Sean Lane on your car. Your boy right here. And now, to show you the energy of Tchaikovsky and rock tempo. Tchaikovsky's violin concerto in D major.
violence and stuff like that. I love Sean Lang's playing. Unbelievable, unbelievable player. Unbelievable mind. That wasn't just a guy who practiced a lot of being fast. He had this huge brain and this big warm heart and this special music came out of him. Um, if there's one thing we can all learn from him, it is if you must play fast, play good stuff fast. You know? okay. uh, I'm very fortunate to have gotten to know Sean pretty well. And we, Sean, do you all know Sean Lane? Yes. Yes. Okay, I hope so. I hope so because I, I ask that sometimes to some guitar players. I don't know Sean. Well, he's easily the most brilliant person I've ever met. As far as if I've ever met a genius, it's Sean Lane. There's no doubt about it. He, it's just his, his level of intellect and, and knowledge of so many subjects. But obviously, musical, musical depth was incredible. He knew as much about classical as he did about pop and rock. And, uh, and he could play as well on guitar as he could on every other instrument. He put him on the drums and the keyboards. And it was insane. So we first met um, at something called the Axe Attack, which is a big Ibanez uh, concert promotion in, uh, at the NAMM show in 1993. Because he was an Ibanez guy, just kind of briefly, but we did a clinic tour back uh, also in 1993, I think later that year. And it was just one of the most memorable weeks of my life. We had so much fun. We laughed so much. So we jammed a little bit every day. And, uh, and it was, and he was the first guy to go, oh, that Charlie Parker that you're playing. He's like, how did you? You hear that? He was the one guy to know exactly what it was, and of course. So, and then so we, we stayed in contact. He lived in Memphis, and my, my brother lived in Memphis for many years because he was teaching at, my brother's a philosophy teacher, and was teaching at the university there. So I'd go to visit my brother and call Shane, Sean up. Some of my influences were maybe Frank Marino then, and that's when I got into Hendrix and some other people. But really what turned me around on guitar and music was were two different things. I saw Alan Holdsworth play live in concert in 1978, and I was about 14. And I didn't know who he was, I just showed up at the concert. It was, uh, it was with the band UK. I didn't even know who they were, I just went to the concert because it was uh, some bargain concert, I think. And uh, it just really changed my whole life about guitar, and really made me see guitar in a whole other way. And, you know, I, I thought I wanted to go in, in a direction like that after I'd seen him. And also the keyboard player, that uh, I ran into a couple years later that played in uh, Black Oak, Arkansas, a band with me about thir 12, 13 years ago. He was a classical pianist, and he had learned from the time he was a kid to play a lot of classical pieces, a lot of Liszt and Brahms and Rachmaninoff. And uh, up until then, classical music, I just didn't think much about it. It had always been, when I was a kid, it was just something that was pretty or something, or something that was just kind of in a museum somewhere or something. But when I saw this guy really play this stuff live, it really had a big effect on me. And so I really saw the vibrancy and the aliveness of it and how it could still relate to any time. It's a timeless kind of music. So that really had a big effect. Yeah, this is a guitar that Ibanez built for me. And uh, it has um, some of the neck is modeled after the guitar that I played the longest, which was a, a Roland guitar. It was the guitar that came with the original synthesizer, the GR300. I got it in about 79. And I played that guitar for about 13 years or something. And uh, and so when I had Ibanez build me this guitar, I had to model the neck after that guitar. Because Ibanez was actually the original manufacturer of the Roland guitars, too. It was another Roland name, but Ibanez made it. And uh, I always liked Curly Maple. I'm, and because I played that guitar so much, I'm really attracted to uh, arch top guitars. I, I really don't, I'm not real comfortable with a flat top on a guitar. So arch top is, is where it's at for me.
Hayden here for Play Music Magazine and in this video we're taking a look at the Vigier Sean Lane Master Signature Guitar. He was not only a ferocious guitar talent but just an amazing all-round musician and I can almost guarantee if you haven't heard any of his material you've never heard anyone play quite like him. It's based on the Vigier Excalibur model with a couple of key differences to make it his signature guitar. So let's get on with the specs. On first appearances the guitar does follow the Excalibur recipe but there are as I mentioned some key differences. Let's take a look at those. Starting with the body here on the Master Series guitar we have a flamed older body. This is an incredibly rare wood that's indigenous I believe to France. Here covered in this uh, clear black finish. There is the maple neck using the familiar Vigier 9010 system, meaning 90% wood, 10% carbon. There's the video. I hope you found it entertaining. I hope you found it informative. The great Sean Lane, one of the world's best guitarists. He could play piano practically as good as he could guitar. Just an amazing player and an all-around good guy. Everybody liked the man. Passed away at age 40, but uh, while he was here, he got it done. All right, well, hopefully you come back and see us again here at the Guitar Temple. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click below here where it says share. Would you do that? And let me know where you're from, where you're from. And don't forget to tell a friend. They're your friends. Tell a friend. Okay, until next time, I'll see you here at the Guitar Temple. Build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space, no privacy uh, And silently it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure Moving closer, no exposure I just wanna be a loner